Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And again, it's another one we're looking at where engagement and interaction can get a bit more exciting. A uh, breakout takes me back to a little uh, arcade game with a little ball bouncing off, but breaking out of other things can be equally exciting. And today we're going to be looking at escape rooms at Ayrshire College. And I'm pleased to have with us Marsh, uh, Sarah Marshall from Ayrshire College and the hospitality team, I believe, uh, who's going to tell us about uh, how she's evolved the use of escape rooms. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Um, I hope you're all well and looking forward to a lovely sunny weekend fingers crossed. Um, and I just want to thank you um, for joining me today for this session. Um, and I think just to begin, um, I want to talk about during the pandemic, we obviously came up with a lot, we developed and adapted a lot of material um, that was suitable and engaging for delivering online. So this escape room was really born out of that. Um, keeping it simple and, and also adapting it so that we can deliver for a unit that was known as uh, working effectively as part of a hospitality team. So we were like, how do we do this? And so came up with the idea of um, delivering it via escape room, um, along with some other team working tasks. But this uh, is obviously something that kind of hit the ground uh, running um, and everyone kind of wanted a little piece of it so <laughs> and then um, obviously Kevin Skade picked up on it so it had to it had to go further so um, I'm just here today to tell you how I made that happen um, so I just want to start by taking you through what is involved in hosting um, the escape room on Microsoft Teams and also how you can create one yourself uh, so I'm going to firstly just share my screen and I'm just going to show you the files that so you can do this a number of different ways um, by <laughs> I would say through like OneNote um, or just using Microsoft uh, Word files and the way that I thought was most accessible for my students was Word files they're most used to that and they would be able to access them quite well um, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to show you. Um, now, unfortunately, this is the answers uh, to begin with, but I'll show you um, just what the files look like. And um, I've also got the answers there. I didn't want to open any of the tasks. Um, I think even if I open task one, you'll be able to see um, what the first task looks like, but you've now got the password for it, so <laughs> uh, for the second one. Um, so I'll just um, say that to create, to start creating your own escape room, you want to just have a kind of loose story um, that, you're, that they're trying to escape from. Um, and setting the scene, telling the story, it really engages the, the learners further. Um, so instead of maybe just having puzzles per room, um, telling a story, maybe taking them on an adventure. Um, and especially um, because I had a lot of pictures um, of the restaurant, the kitchens um, already um, on my, <laughs> in my computer. So I was able to use a lot of pictures that we had and I didn't even need to go into the building. Um, so before I even knew I was going to make this, I had those pictures there. Um, don't tell me why I took them, because I don't know. <laughs> I just was uh, lucky to have them. Um, so this is the first kind of set in the scene page here. Um, and I'll read the first little section for you just to set the scene for yourselves as well, um, before we dive into maybe solving a problem. Uh, so it's the end of a busy evening at Ayrshire College's training restaurant, Salt and Barrel. You have tidied up your area and you're spending some time cleaning and sanitising. Before long, you notice that you have completely lost track of time. Your lecturer told you to be finished, changed and out of the building for 7pm. It's now 7.20pm. Hello, is anyone still there? You shout. A voice comes from the next room. Come on, it's not like you to be last finished. Um, you quickly finish cleaning, drop dirty washing in, a red, in the red kitchen bin uh, on the way past before making your way to the lockers. You remember that the lockers were being reset today, but you were given a slip with a new code on it. And that's really how it begins. Um, they've to, the first task is they have to put together their code for the next room. Um, 
and it's ripped apart in your pocket so that you've got to piece it back together. Uh, so it's just a little insight into uh, what that kind of looks like. For each of these files, I'll just close this one just now. Um, for each of these, uh, they're all password protected. So if you go to file and you go to info, you can set a password for a document by hitting this um, button here, protect document and going to encrypt with password. So anything that um, any of the <laughs> any of the passwords, it was important to keep track of them because uh, once you've encrypted it, it's um, quite difficult if you can't remember the password to reverse that. Um, so write down the password as soon as you've, uh, you've input it for each room and it'll, it'll keep you right. Um, and generally I waited till the end to, to put the passwords on just to make sure that I, I had created everything first. Um, so I'll go back and I think I'd like to show you um, just maybe we could solve together one of the rooms. Um, we'll go into task nine, all right. There we go. Okay, <laughs> I was trying the wrong room. Um, so um, this uh, is, we're obviously diving in midway, but basically what you've done is you've came through the kitchen, you've um, had to solve a series of puzzles to get through to this room here. There's a couple of doors between you and the kitchen and the, the back corridor as well. So you're coming through. I know a lot of you wouldn't have been into our um, training restaurant or anything like that, but um, this is a picture of the the kind of, straight ahead there uh, just below the clock is our front door um so in this one i want to see where your mind goes um so the door opens uh, does anyone even use so in the last um the last one it, you had to use morse code to solve the problem um and morse code was the the, the morse if you followed the morse code it gave you the the numbers um that you needed to get into this room um, you're thankful for the summer nights providing plenty of light as you begin to look around for another clue to aid your escape. You remember that Lisa the intern, so that's another, that's someone that works with us, uh, usually keeps some, oh, usually keeps some keys in a drawer behind the bar. You notice several ingredients sitting on the bar. What could the connection be? So um, I don't know where, where anyone's mind goes with that. <laughs> Is anyone, um, obviously we work with hospitality students, so a lot of them got this one straight away, but um, is anyone thinking? Um, tequila shots, um, tequila, mm. well, uh, cocktails. Yes, yeah. A particular cocktail, perhaps? A particular cocktail, indeed, yeah. Uh, Who knows, don't up in case it reveals something about them. <laughs> 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 so, in mojito, but... mojito. So, um, what what the the learner would then do is they would go to task eleven, and let's type in mojito. So it's not the correct answer. Any ideas? Anyone? Anyone jump in? <laughs> some lineup of booze. Um, zombie cocktail. <laughs> it is some. No, it is some lineup of booze. So. Mm. I don't know if any are, are kind of familiar with, with cocktails at all and which cocktail has quite a lot of booze in it. Um, will I give you the answer? <laughs> I think you're going to have to. Yeah. Is there some so, kind of sunrise or rainbow? or? No, no. no. Okay. It's not sex on the beach, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Thank no. goodness for that. <laughs> um, it's a Long Island iced tea. Uh. So um, I, I, it's one that, <laughs> I mean, obviously we've got hospitality students, so they, we would be hoping they'd get it pretty pretty quickly. Um, but Long Island iced tea is all those ingredients. So if we go to um, our last room, oh, um, so we've got Long Island iced tea. Hey. How <laughs> I was so sure I was typing that. So anyway, we are on to the last page, and um, oh, 
that sounds fab, but I really should lock all of this alcohol away, alcohol away because we shouldn't be leaving alcohol out. Um, I just wanted to get that across to the students as well. Uh, if you find alcohol sitting out in the restaurant um, when no one else is around, you should be locking it away. Um, so uh, you think to yourself as you make your way uh, to the drawer, you find nothing but the keys for the alcohol cupboard. As you put the drinks away, you notice that one of the till screens has lit up. So it's asking for a um, to insert a password. You enter the code Long Island Ice Tea and the screen comes on, it comes to life. Once you crack the final code, send it to your lecturer on Teams to escape the salt and barrel. What, what in the world is this? So this, um, does anyone know what these kind of numbers? It's latitude and longitude, isn't it? It is indeed. And um, I hyperlinked this. I made it quite obvious because... Um, the, the level that I was working with was like level four, level five um, ended up doing this as well, um, just so that they were quite aware that they could maybe follow this hyperlink. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste. And copy. And I'm just going to follow the hyperlink, which takes you to Google Earth um, for them to put in the, the latitude and longitude. Um, Fingers crossed it doesn't, because I was trying it all out, because I haven't used this in a, like a little while. While, um, while, while we're waiting on it, loading, Sarah, can you tell me what, what extent did the, did they try to work out what the numbers were before they clicked on the, the link, do you think, or clicked the clues? Do you know, I probably gave them um, less credit than they were due. <laughs> they, they worked it out pretty quickly. Oh, <laughs> but a lot of them put, them in, put it into Google Maps. And um, the kind of hint was that I really did want them to put it into Google Earth because as soon as they put it into Google Earth, um, it would come up with uh, this. So it's a big guitar. <laughs> so that was the final answer was a, was a guitar. Um, so what uh, they then had to do was give me that final answer. So what I'm gonna do is you've seen the files, you've seen um, maybe how to definitely take down that password and um, <laughs> have it written um, properly. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna close this just now. And I'm gonna close this. Hey, okay, don't save that. And you can see that the, the final answer was uh, the guitar code for freedom. Um, so I'm going to take you on to, just going to show this PowerPoint here. Now, obviously, we're not on Microsoft Teams at the moment. So um, I thought it best that I maybe show you through um, just a, a couple of slides, just detailing what it will actually look like on Teams. Um, so I just want to make it clear that on Microsoft Teams, you need to be the person hosting to be able to provide um, to be able to access and provide the breakout rooms. OK, it will only come up for this icon here will only come up for you if you've arranged the meeting. OK, um, if even if you are another um, lecturer or um, teacher that is involved um, and maybe you're co-teaching um, that other person, unless they've um, set up the room, they can't really control the breakout rooms. It's only that person who arranged the meeting, all right? Um, and you can do that just by scheduling a meeting in the, the calendar. Um, even if you're gonna meet in the next five minutes to do it and it's pretty last minute, as long as you schedule the meeting, then it'll work. If you were just to phone everyone um, to come together, it, it won't come up for you, unfortunately. And we found that out kind of trial and error. <laughs> so just to let you know, like uh, scheduling a meeting is the best way to, to make sure that you're getting the breakout rooms option. Um, so in the meeting, before you send um, everyone away to their breakout rooms, it's good to put them in their working groups as well. Um, and I would say that a team of three or four, four is probably an optimum number um, for it to make sure that everyone's actually having contribution. Um, three, three is good as well. Um, but what you're looking for is someone, a, a kind of a key, strong, um, kind of tech savvy person per group. All right. Um, someone who can, even if they're on their phone, 
a tablet or their laptop, someone who's able to share their screen um, and, and provide that for the rest of the group so that they're all seeing the same thing at once. Um, there's There's been a number of times where they've opted to use their phone because they find that um, switching from um, looking at the files to inputting new codes is just easier because that's the generation that is coming up. They're more tech savvy on their phones and then using a laptop, they find it quite clunky. So um, yeah, I like I like prefer to give them the option um, and it works just as well. Microsoft Teams is, is very, it's, it works well with phones, tablets, um, laptops, computers, whatever. Um, so I, when I'm sending the files, I have before put the files onto a Teams page, but I would say the best way to do it is, and it, it gives the, the, the learner more responsibility, is taking that team leader. So we would say the person who was taking charge, um, the tech savvy person would be the team leader. Okay, it's not always, not always the strongest person in the team, but they might be the most tech savvy. Um, and I would get their email address or their student email and I would have the files ready to go just in an email. Um, and I would send that when they said start. OK, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a wee second. Um, but I would send it via email. And the reason for this is if I, it saves making a team up, a full team up just for maybe the one occurrence. Um, and also, if you upload, um, say we were going to do it through OneDrive or we were going to do it, I was just going to send it to their team. The problem with that is Microsoft Teams, um, it kind of, if someone's accessing it somewhere else, it, 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 there's a lot of overlapping and you can't always share the file several times in a private chat. It just keeps it separate and if sending it via email is just much cleaner um, than having them all kind of sitting around everywhere. Um, yeah, it's just much cleaner. Um, so this is the breakout rooms tab here. So you would be clicking, clicking this tab um, just to get you started. And then um, this screen will come up here. Okay, can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is for creating your breakout rooms. Now you're going to um, select how many rooms you want to create just here, but don't panic if you um, say, for example, made three rooms and you actually wanted four, you can add more at the next stage. Um, so don't panic uh, if you haven't created enough or you've created too many, you don't need to use them all. Um, and then this next section here um, is asking if you want the participants to be assigned automatically or manually. So um, typically, if Sometimes I'll even say that I've assigned them automatically and I'll assign them manually because you know your learners, you know who works well with who, who clashes and it's sometimes just better to, to do it that way. And they'll be like, oh, oh, like I'm quite happy with this group, but it's actually, it was manually uh, done. Um, and maybe if you want to challenge learners who maybe it's a very, very quiet group and you want to say, right, I'm going to put you guys together because I feel like none, like you, need to maybe have more input and it, it kind of not forces them but encourages them to have a little bit more input um, than they previously would to make sure that their team are doing well. Um, so once you've selected, um, if you select automatically they'll all go in automatically and you'll see that in the next uh, slide. If you pick manually um, your screen will look like this. Now I've just blurred out the student's name that I uh, <laughs> I kind of um, I asked to um, help me by uh, joining a call and ignore me so that I could um, come up with these slides. Um, I'm just going to move you guys out the way so I can see. Uh, so this is what it'll look like if you haven't assigned anyone um, automatically. Now, if you have, then they will already jump down to these rooms and it won't say that the room's empty. Um, if you haven't and you've opted for the manual choice, all of your learners will come up here and you'll just click uh, select them. Now, obviously, again, if you're co-teaching and there's a person you don't want to send, don't select them. Um, and I would avoid doing automatic um, automatic allocation because it'll make them jump somewhere. Um, you can obviously, if I just, if I go to the next slide, um, this is how you would select uh, the learner and then send them to each room, okay? 
if you have sent them to a room and you want to unassign them, you would just select uh, their name and it will come up at the side uh, to unassign them from that room or send them to another room. OK, if they're unassigned, they'll just pop up back up here and they won't go to any room um, and they'll stay in the room with you. All right. Once you're ready and you've checked with all of the learners, you've um, you've went over the rules, you've made sure that they know how to navigate the files, that the, the team leader is going to receive them um, and that they know how to share their screen. Um, I would also maybe um, definitely cover again, making sure that they know that they're working through the file numbers and also about the the case sensitive information uh, with the password, just making sure that it's very clear to them um, because they, they may get to a point where they're giving you, they're, they think they're putting in the right password and it's just <laughs> exactly what we encountered earlier. So it was a good example. <laughs> so I must have been typing something wrong, but um, the frustration can be there if you're um, in competition with other people. Uh, so if um, I'll show you just in the next section about how to communicate when they're in rooms. Obviously you can visit them, but you can also communicate them without visit, visiting them. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, so this is uh, what it looks like when you've pressed that button and the rooms are opening. Um, and then once they've fully went through, it'll say that they're in the meeting. Okay. Now, if you want to visit the room, you can click on this green open here. Um, and that's just, that also tells you that there's people in the room, they've not disappeared. Um, but you can click on that and if, I'll show you on this slide here. You can also go to join room if you want to visit them. Um, and what I like to do is turn my camera off, turn my audio off, uh, my microphone off and go in and kind of slip in and a lot of the time they wouldn't realize you're, that you're there um, so I like to listen to them just kind of before they realize that I'm there just to see what kind of input they're having and how they're getting on um, this is also the feature where you can close the room so once they have got the answer right and um, you can select close in that room I'm just going to go back um, to I'll go to this one so here is, this is my chat feature and I've just cut out the rest of it because obviously there is um, some sensitive information from other students um, in my chat. But if, for example, um, when we're starting the room, I have always got them to say start in their, their chats on their rooms um, because it pops up in my personal chat and it will say room one, two, three, four, all right? Um, and it's really it's really well laid out because also they can say we need a hint for room X, Y, Z. We need a hint. Um, we're stuck on this. It's not working. Is the password this? And maybe they, they are typing the right password. And again, it's it's the case sensitive. Um, or maybe they're just getting it completely wrong. So um, you can give them hints in there. You can also just go and visit their room if they're getting really stuck. Um, but I, at the start of the the whole experience, I like to sell to them like you're stuck in this room, like you need to escape, uh, don't leave the room kind of thing, unless um, you you drop off the call, <laughs> I'm not letting you leave the, the room. <laughs> um, so anything like that, it'll come through the chat feature, which I can monitor. And um, if I just jump to that last uh, page there, you can see down the left hand side, um, that there can be loads and I like to actually see the two um, the two tabs I like to keep them side by side so that I can see if anyone's talking to me if they're putting in the final answer uh, so if they put in guitar here I would want to straight away I'd want to close the room and pull them back and just give them a big round of applause um, celebration um, and also another thing is when they say start if, for example, one room is taking a long time to get set up and start, um, you can start the rest of the rooms, just send them the email uh, while you go and maybe give them a hand with it. if it is something tech related that they're struggling with. Um, you can go over to them and um, help sort them out. But you can start the rest of the rooms. And um, once this room that you're in, you've sorted out, 
get them to put start in, and then you've got they've got a new start position time because you can look at the times where they've said start, all right, and then it gives them all an accurate time. If I, I think our department is just very, very competitive. <laughs> so um, <laughs> just having having that and looking at the, the numbers and saying, oh, like they were quicker, they were quicker, they just started later. Um, so just making it fair for them. That I, I think the competitiveness is just, um, it, it is good. It's a good driver and something that, um, like whenever we've done this, it's really it's really driven them to to want to succeed. Um, so it's been a good a good um, activity to do. Um, so it was a good way to keep an eye on everything, just keeping them side by side. Uh, once they obviously once they've provided the the last password, I would pull them back and uh, celebrate. And then I think that's it. Is anyone? I'm going to stop sharing my room, my screen, and no, I'm thank not you very much, Sarah. That was a fantastic description of both the activity and some hints as to organising it as well. I think you thank preempted you. Kevin's question, who asked about the, whether the teams were competing with each other, and <laughs> clearly there's a competitive element there. And um, can I ask, did you have any students who didn't take to the activity who weren't competitive or into games or? Uh, well, so um, this year in particular, uh, we have very, very small teams. And because of that, our teams have became very, very close knit. And personally, I didn't encounter any of my students that weren't really quite interested in it. Um, but I, I, I know that, so when we did it cross campus um, with AIR, um, there was one or two who didn't, in fact, I'm trying to think. No, I, I can't actually, no, I, I wouldn't say because they were just quiet, but then one of the people that were quiet decided that they wanted to share their screen. So then they got really, really involved. So I, I think it, it just depends on the, on the group. Um, we, I mean, we were lucky enough to have such small, close knit classes this year, just based on when we were in campus on campus that uh, we had to stay very distance, and um, the maximum number was seven, so um, very, very low number. But it meant for a very close knit class. Yeah. Can I ask how often you think you could use this sort of activity? Obviously, it's got a novelty appeal um, <laughs> and an engagement one. Um, I, I, I take it's not something you'd want to be doing on a weekly basis with them. No, no, no. Um, I, I don't think so. I think it was good for that unit. And it was actually um, other classes, uh, like our level six HNC, they all wanted a shot once the level fours were raving about it. Um, so we put on extra, um, break, like extra escape rooms for them as well. Um, and I think it was good. I think it'd be a good thing every year to do, um, especially for that unit. Um, but I wouldn't say it would be something. I think the novel novelty would definitely wear off, but once or twice, yeah, throughout the year, once for their unit, and then maybe again, um, a good induction activity. Someone just put, yeah, yeah. Um, I think definitely an introduction to it. Yeah, absolutely. And what sort and of investment of time did you have to make to get to the point of being able to get, deliver this to the students? Um, I'm not going to lie, it, a day. Um, uh, it didn't take too long it, you know the hardest part was starting and getting that story uh, and then once you've got once you've got the start of your story then your mind runs wild and you've got all the other kind of information yeah um, and also department um, depending on your subject area it, I mean you could you could really go anywhere <laughs> so um I know over at air and um, they've asked me to make one about the westerly that's their training restaurant so um I'm gonna gonna put something together for that um do, the one thing I will say see the the chat like the tasks the challenges the solutions the, the problems um they can can be a little bit samey if you're searching around for some uh, answers um try and make them all different, I'd say. So we had like um, one that was Morse code, one that was, um, you know, like the water buckets that are trickling down and you need to work out which one uh, is gonna be full. Um, you've seen it all on on like social media when, when 
lockdown was happening, all the little tasks, the brain teasers to keep you busy, you know, um, adding them and yeah, making it, just trying to make it a little bit more exciting. Yeah. And there's, there's lots of resources online for um, kind of coming up with puzzles and tasks and things like that, especially ones that are relevant to your area. Yeah. Just like the, the, <laughs> the cocktail one. <laughs> um, yeah. Wonderful. I'm sorry, I'm going to look at the chat because I couldn't see the chat when I was on and just in case there's any questions that people had. I've been keeping an eye here. There's lots of uh, positive comments about uh, the way it engages <laughs> students and learners. It's uh, um, yeah, something a little different and, uh, and yeah, the variety stands out as well. I'm going to bring the recorded part of the session to a close, Sarah. Thank you very much for inspiring some ideas as in a, a novel way of engaging with students and one in that I can readily see that they could get very much uh, uh, stuck into and you need stuck in the room that's until they get out so thank you very much for letting us know about that well thank you so much <laughs>